The Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Freedoms, Article 19. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of the frontiers. Here in Canada, according to the statutes and the regulations, which are termed the police acts, we know that the police departments, the police officers themselves, are considered legal persons under law. Now, one part of the Criminal Code of Canada that's in operation all across Canada, it deals specifically with legal persons, legal persons. The police, who are legal persons under law, are enforcing, trying to apply laws and regulations upon legal persons out there on the street. Men and women, but they don't recognize them as human beings with intrinsic rights, they recognize them as legal persons. The police, they are working with municipal bylaws as well as the criminal code. And we know that municipal bylaws also apply only to legal persons. So, in the Criminal Code of Canada, it states that in the interpretation section that a municipality includes the corporation of a town, village, or parish. So, the corporation, a municipality. So, it's declaring that it's a legal person. Now, the next part of the line is, and the inhabitants, which are the men and women of that municipality, they are considered to be incorporated. That's what the criminal code says. So they are considered to be legal persons. Now, the rest of that code, the criminal code of Canada, interpretation section. Municipality includes the corporation of a city, town, village, county, township, parish, or other territory or local division of a province. The inhabitants of which are incorporated, or are entitled to hold property collectively for a public purpose. The Criminal Code of Canada, Offender. Offender means a person, person who has been determined by a court to be guilty of an offense, whether on acceptance of a plea of guilty or on a finding of guilt. The Criminal Code of Canada, prison, includes a penitentiary, common jail, public or reformatory prison, lockup, guard room, or other place in which persons, persons who are charged with or convicted of offenses are usually kept in custody. The rest of that code says that the incorporated inhabitants are entitled, you're entitled, to hold property collectively for a public purpose. So here you go. You're seeing right here the certain rights and certain freedoms that your legal person is given. Because your legal person under the Criminal Code of Canada, it has an entitlement to property, but it doesn't own the property. Listen to what it's saying. To hold the property collectively with the rest of the city, and the rest of the inhabitants, and it's for a public purpose. So, these police officers, when you're operating from a legal person, if you wonder why they can come onto your property, why they have the right to walk onto your property, and they don't consider it private property, it's because that the property that you own within your city, you're considered a legal person, and it's being held for a public purpose. And the police officers, their legal person, they have more rights and duties than your legal person has to try and apply authority and regulations and statutes upon you because by recognizing you as a legal person you become underneath them. The Criminal Code of Canada, the Interpretation Section Everyone, person and owner Everyone, person and owner and similar expressions include Her Majesty and an organization. So when you use the word everyone, or person, or owner, you can be talking about Her Majesty, or you can be talking about an organization. 
It includes that, without the S. In the interpretation section of the Criminal Code of Canada, you have three subjects, three main subjects being described here in this code. You have an everyone, you have a person, and you have an owner. Now, together an everyone, person, and owner can be considered a legal person, a citizen, or a subject. Because we know that an owner, for example, an owner of a house, an owner of a car, is considered a legal person because they give us ownership rights through our legal person. We know a citizen also can be an owner, and we know a subject also can be an owner. Same way as we look at a person. We know that a person is an artificial being, so it's a legal person. We know that a person is a citizen of Canada, and we know that a person is a subject of Canada. Now, everyone, everyone can include a person and an owner. So a person and an owner can fit into everyone. But there's also one last designation that fits into everyone, and that would be man, woman, or human. So when you say the word everyone, there's a distinction there that can be made between a man, woman, and human. But right now we're staying on the legal person, on the legal person in law and with police. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 7. Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person, and the right not to be deprived thereof except in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice. Article 8. Everyone has the right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure. Article 9. Everyone has the right not to be arbitrarily detained or imprisoned. Article 10. Everyone has the right on arrest or on detention, a. to be informed promptly of the reasons thereof, b. to retain and instruct counsel without delay, and to be informed of that right, and c. to have the validity of the detention determined by way of habeas corpus, and to be released if the det detention is not lawful. In the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 7, it reads that everyone Notice that again, here it says everyone. So now we're going to be talking about a legal person, or it can mean the human, or it can mean the human. So, everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of the person, and not to be deprived except through the operations of law, in regular English. So you can be deprived of your, of your right to life, your right to liberty, and your right to your security of your person, through an operation of law. So, this is one of the legal rights that everyone has. Everyone has the right to life, everyone has the right to liberty, and everyone has the right to the security of their person, which of course is your patrimony. So, but it says that you can be deprived of these rights through an operation of law. In the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 8, it starts like this again. Now we're talking about legal rights. We're talking about stuff when we're dealing with the police. Everyone, everyone, so it means a legal person or a human being still. It's, they're leaving it open. Everyone has the right to be secure against seech, uh, search and seizure. So everyone has the right to be secure against search and seizure, which means that no one has the right to search you or to seize any of your property. Now, article number nine. Everyone has the right not to be arbitrarily de detained or imprisoned. That's pretty clear. And again, it's talking about everyone. However, when they draw out the designation of the legal person from the everyone, when they draw out that designation, then they can strip you of your rights, as you've seen in the article before. And they can search you. And they can seize your property. And they can detain you arbitrarily when you're on the street. And they can imprison you because they're considering you a legal person and you're not operating under your fundamental rights as a human being. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article Number 10, it states that everyone, here again it starts the verse, everyone has a right on arrest to be informed, to be informed why they are being arrested, they, they have a right to retain counsel or to be informed that they can obtain a counsel, and number three, everyone, everyone has the right to habeas corpus which means that they can be brought before a judge 
and ask the judge to make a decision if this is a lawful detention, if there is in fact jurisdiction that can be operated upon in this case. So everyone has that right. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 11. Any person charged, now notice what or who they are charging with an offense, only a person not an everyone, not a human being, or a man and woman. Any person charged with an offense has the right to be informed without reasonable delay of the specific offense, to be tried within a reasonable time, not to be compelled to be a witness in proceedings against that person in respect of the offense, to be presumed innocent until proven guilty according to law in a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal, not to be detained Oh, sorry, not to be denied reasonable bail without just cause. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article Number 11. Now, this starts off like this. Any person, so they've just qualified it now. The everyone is gone, so the man and the woman is gone. This is not applicable upon them. So, every person charged with an offense. So that legal person being charged with an offense, he, he has the right to be informed without reasonable delay. Without reasonable delay. Remember those, that word. And to be tried in a reasonable time. Reasonable time. Any person. It continues on to say, every person, any person, will be presumed innocent until proven guilty by law. And any person can receive bail and be released until they're presumed or found guilty. In the Criminal Code of Canada and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, we see the two subjects in operation. There's three main subjects, but we're talking about the two right there. We see the everyone and the person in the Charter. And we see two operations of law going on with the everyone and the person. Because at Article 10 in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it branched off and everyone is gone now and they're only referring to a person well this is how they limit you this is how they take away all your intrinsic rights as an everyone and return to you certain rights and duties as your legal person especially in the law especially when you're dealing with the judges and the police system in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms it says that when everyone is arrested they have to be informed promptly and another way of expressing this is they have to be informed right away, right now. What's the charge and what's going on, right now. The person, though, in the Charter, when they're arrested, they have to be informed without reasonable, unreasonable delay. They have to be informed without unreasonable delay. Well, the way the system works nowadays, they can wait for a year, sometimes even two years, to charge you. And, say, and they'll say that that's unreasonable delay. So here are two operations of law. One that's afforded to an everyone, and one that's afforded to the legal person. And the everyone, right now, tell me what's going on, deal with this business. The legal person, they can make investigations, they can spy on you, they can tap your phone, they can do all that business, and they'll title it unreasonable delay. We didn't charge you from the beginning. Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Article 10. When that everyone is arrested and promptly informed on the spot of what those charges are, then he has a right to call on habeas corpus. That's a man or a woman doing that. And by calling on the habeas corpus, he's asking to go before a judge to show the lawful excuse of why he shouldn't have been arrested and what's going on here. A person... They cannot invoke habeas corpus. They have no right to be brought before a judge right away. According to Article 11 in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, they're going to have a trial. They're going to get lawyers. They're going to go before a judge. They need bail, and etc. You know the law system, the legal system, how they yoke you up. But they don't tell you about this habeas corpus. And the whole thing is, as you saw in, the, in Article 10, it says to go before the judge to see if this is a lawful detention. Are they holding you lawfully? Or have you produced a lawful excuse? In the Criminal Code of Canada, 
Article 126, it starts everyone, everyone who, without lawful excuse. So here's that wording again, lawful excuse, that ties in with the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And it says everyone who, without lawful excuse. Now remember that everyone can mean a legal person also. It can mean a legal person or a human. So, Canadian uh, Criminal Code, Article 127, again, everyone who without lawful excuse. And Canadian Criminal Code, Article 215, everyone who fails without lawful excuse. So everyone can establish a lawful excuse. A man, a woman, a human can establish a lawful excuse, or a legal person can establish a lawful excuse also. The Criminal Code of Canada, Article 126, disobeying a statute. Everyone who, without lawful excuse, contravenes an act of Parliament by willfully doing anything that it forbids, or by willfully omitting to do anything it requires to be done, is, unless a punishment is expressly provided by law, guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. Two years. Criminal Code of Canada, Article 127. Disobeying order of court. Everyone who, without lawful excuse, disobeys a lawful order made by a court of justice or by a person or body of persons authorized by any act to make or give the order other than an order for the payment of money is guilty unless a punishment or other mode of proceeding is expressly provided by law. The Criminal Code of Canada, Article 215, Sub-Article 2. Everyone commits an offense who, being under a legal duty within the meaning of subsection 1, fails without lawful excuse, the proof of which lies on him to perform that duty. The Criminal Code of Canada, Article 87, it states that every person now, every person commits an offense without lawful excuse, without lawful excuse. So a person now is establishing a lawful excuse. In Article 89, every person commits an offense without lawful excuse every person. So we know that when you use the word, the, the term here, every person, you can interchange it with everyone. You could if you wanted to. You could say everyone. The Criminal Code of Canada, Article 87, pointing a firearm. Every person, person, commits an offense who, without lawful excuse, points a firearm at another person whether the firearm is loaded or unloaded. The Criminal Code of Canada Carrying a weapon while attending public meeting Article 89 Every person person commits an offense who without lawful excuse carries a weapon a prohibited device or any ammunition or prohibited ammunition while the person is attending or is on the way to attend a public meeting. So it's pretty clear in the Criminal Code of Canada that everyone can establish a lawful excuse and a person, a legal person, can establish a lawful excuse. Well, the legal person can establish their lawful excuse to any charge that is trying to be placed against them by claiming and declaring that you refuse, you, the human being, refuse to be recognized and you refuse the right to be recognized as a person according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So when you invoke Article 6 then, you establish a lawful excuse. I refuse to be recognized as a legal person, therefore I'm establishing a lawful excuse. When you, when you invoke that right, you will be brought before a judge. That's when your habeas corpus kicks in. Because what you're saying is, I'm not a legal person, I am an everyone, as a man or a woman, therefore bring me before the judge and let's ta challenge this jur jurisdiction. Because you are trying to charge me as a legal person but I am not. The Criminal Code of Canada Offender Offender means a person person who has been determined 
by a court to be guilty of an offense, whether on acceptance of a plea of guilty or on a finding of guilt. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Freedoms Article 1 All human beings, all of us, are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. That's the first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Freedoms. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6. Everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 4. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. So that when you have police interaction with you, the police, they assume and they render you, as you saw, a legal person. A legal person. And they want you to accept that designation. They want you to accept those rights and the freedoms that are attached to the legal person. Because in doing so, you've limited yourself. You've limited yourself very severely. Because now you're given over to the system. And they will try and beat you up. And they will try and cause you loss and damage. However, there's no obligation to be recognized as a legal person. And there's a trick that's being used against all men and women here in Canada. There's a trick that they get you to accept that jurisdiction of the legal person and not to operate from an everyone to establish a lawful excuse. And here's how they do it. If someone's trying to arrest you, once they're going to place you under arrest and put the handcuffs on you, they're going to read you your rights. That's what they're going to say. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to be provided an attorney. You have the right to be proven, uh, uh, considered innocent until you're proven guilty. When they finish asking you all this, they're gonna, the cop is going to ask you a question right there on the street. After he's read you those rights, he's going to say, do you understand these rights? That's what he's going to say to you. Do you understand these rights? He's not asking you if you mentally comprehend what he just said to you. Get that out of your head. This is the trick that they're using. He's not asking you if you understand what he says in the meaning of words. He's asking if you are willing to accept these rights. When he asks you this question, do you understand these rights? He's actually trying to trick you into letting go of your intrinsic rights as a human being and taking on the rights that he just told you about as a legal person. Because remember, they're operating as legal persons. Now at this point, when he asks you that question, do you understand that these rights? Meaning, do you want to accept these certain rights and and duties that I'm offering you as a legal person. You have to respond this way. You have to say, you have to answer whoever's asking you this question specifically. You have to say, I do not stand under that. Do not say any more, do not say any less. Just say, I do not stand under that. Perhaps the cop will turn around and say, what is it? You do not comprehend what I'm saying to you? He's going to try and fish for you to say yes or no. He's looking for you to accept these rights. In your rebuttal to him, the only thing you should say is, are, are you claiming that I do not have comprehension to what you just said? And leave it at that. Do not answer yes, do not answer no. He will continue now to read the rest of the rights uh, that he's supposed to read to you. And at the end of it, he will ask you a question again. He will say, say anything, and it will be used against you in the court of law. What he's doing right there is he's presenting you an offer. He's saying, if you say anything, we're going to take that, what you just said, and we're going to use that to go to court. If you say yes, if you say no, we're going to take just those words and use that to go to court. So when he asks you the second time, when he says, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, then he'll say, do you understand your rights? Don't say anything to him again. You've already answered him the first time, you told him no, by, you didn't say the word no, but you said, I do not stand under this, which means I'm not accepting your rights. What you've done right there is you've invoked habeas corpus. By acting like that, you must be brought before a judge, a justice of the peace, to determine the jurisdiction. Because right there you've declared, I'm not accepting your jurisdiction as a legal person, 
As such, the cops have no power and no authority to apply the, the rules and the regulations upon a legal person, upon you. Because you denied them that jurisdiction through that interaction. So I'm going to run down it one more time. When the police officer stops you and he says, I'm placing you under arrest now, and he begins to read you your rights, you have the right to remain silent, you have the right uh, to an attorney, you have the right blah blah blah, and he'll ask you for the first time, do you understand your rights? You need to respond, I do not, under I do not stand under that. I do not stand under that. When he continues to go on and reads you the rest of your rights, he's going to ask you again, do you understand, yes or no? Do not say anything. Right there now, you've broken their game. You've broken their power over you. They cannot now consider you a legal person or try to charge you as a legal person. It absolutely takes this operation of law when you're on the street. If you fail in this operation of law, you cannot invoke habeas corpus and you cannot um, operate under your intrinsic rights. You're going to have to go back now once you get all the paperwork and fight them on their, on their jurisdiction. This is the situation that you have to be prepared for. That when you're stopped and they're trying to arrest you for whatever it is, you are able to defend them off. 